There are 80 recipes in Stardew Valley that leaves us with a huge variety of options and choices. But which ones should we actually care about? Hopefully this video will answer that. I will be ranking the best food in Stardew Valley that will lead you to success. Without further delay, let's get started. Sixth place might seem strange, but we have the minus treat. Minus treat will increase your mining level by three. You might be wondering why that is important. Well, each level in mining will increase the effectiveness of your pickaxe by one. If you are at mining level 10, you will have a pickaxe efficiency of 10. By eating a minus treat, you will further increase the pickaxe effectivity to 13. This will make mining iridium nodes and even radioactive nodes much faster. Naturally, you could just use a slingshot or bombs, but since minus treat is so easy to get, it does have some value. In fifth place, we have spicy eel. Spicy eel is actually just a really good thing to bring with you into the mines. It will give you plus one to your luck and plus one to your speed, so it definitely has its uses. It is true that there are much better food items in the game, but spicy eel is just incredibly easy to obtain, meaning that you can get quite a bit of this stuff in the early game, making it very useful until you get better food. You can randomly get some spicy eel from defeating serpents in the skull cavern, or you can duplicate rubies using crystallariums and trade them for spicy eel at the desert trader. You can also pair spicy eel with coffee to double down on the speed boost. Coffee is also quite easy to get and when you have both spicy eel and coffee, you'll be running around the skull cavern at maximum speed. This will definitely help you out a ton in the early game and that is why it even made this list. Naturally, in fourth place, we have the farmer's lunch. You will automatically unlock the recipe for a farmer's lunch at level 3 farming. I always underestimated farmer's lunch because I never knew what it was capable of until I tested it with fertilizers. Regular farmer's lunch will increase your farming level by 3 and each level in farming will increase your chances of getting higher quality crops. For example, at farming level 1, you will only have a 3% chance of farming a gold quality crop, but at farming level 14, you will have a 29% chance of harvesting a gold quality crop. That is a huge difference, but if we combine our high farming level with some fertilizer, we can greatly increase these odds. If we use some quality fertilizer and if we are at level 14 farming, we will have a very impressive 82% chance of harvesting a gold quality crop. Gold quality crops generally sell for more than regular or silver quality crops, so there's definitely an incentive to use a farmer's lunch. But, and this is a very important but, the quality of your crop will not affect the sell price of your artisan goods. If you use iridium quality star fruit to make wine, it will end up at the same value as if you used regular quality star fruit. So, you should only use a farmer's lunch and fertilizer if you're intending to sell the crop as is. In third place, we have two foods that should always be used together. First, a lucky lunch. You can get the recipe for a lucky lunch on the 28th of your second spring by watching the Queen of Souls on your TV. If you missed it, you'll have to check the TV every Wednesday and Sunday and hope they just rerun that episode. The lucky lunch will increase your luck stat by 3. That's a ton and it really does help out, trust me. To craft a lucky lunch, you will need 1 tortilla, 1 blue jazz and 1 sea cucumber. Next in this category is ginger ale. You can buy the recipe for a ginger ale at the dwarf on floor 5 in the volcano and it only costs 1000 gold. Crafting ginger ale is incredible incredibly easy as it only needs 3 ginger and 1 sugar. You can quite easily find ginger randomly on Ginger Island. And you can just buy sugar at P 
tier store. Ginger Ale will only increase your luck stat by one. But ginger ale is the only beverage in the game that increases your luck. And in Stardew Valley, you can have one buff from eating food and one buff from drinking something. Meaning you can stack the luck bonus from ginger ale with the luck bonus from a lucky lunch, giving you a very impressive plus four to your total luck stat. Naturally, you can use key seasoning to increase the luck bonus by two, giving you a plus six to your luck. That is you and it will make a big difference in the mines. Trust me, as you can see from this clip, I am getting more prismatic shards than I will ever need. And that is just the power of luck. In second place, we have the seafoam pudding. This stuff is just amazing. Seafoam pudding will give you a very impressive plus four to your fishing. Each level in fishing will increase the size of your fishing bar and having a plus four bonus makes a huge difference. As an added bonus, you can cook seafoam pudding with key seasoning to get a plus 5 bonus to your fishing skill. That is how I was able to get a fishing bar so big that it becomes really hard to fail at catching any fish. You will automatically get the recipe for seafoam pudding when you reach level 9 fishing, but the ingredients can be a little hard to get. You will need a flounder, you can simply catch these in the ocean during spring or summer, or you can catch them on ginger island. Midnight carp are night fish, so you can only catch them from 10 p.m. You can find them in front of the mines during fall or winter or anytime on ginger island, making them not that hard to find. Squid ink is where this gets a little bit tricky. If you have fish ponds with squids, you will probably have tons of the stuff. If you don't, you will have to defeat these floating squids in the dangerous version of the regular mines. They are quite quite annoying to deal with, but they aren't that tough if you have the best weapon and rings in the game. If you are struggling with some of the harder fish or with some of the legendary fish, then seafoam pudding will be your savior. You can use Dish of the Sea as an alternative. It gives you a plus three bonus to your fishing level, so it's not bad at all. It's much easier to cook since it only needs two sardines and one hash brown. The number one best food in Stardew Valley is most definitely Magic Rock Candy. Magic Rock Candy will give you a plus two to your mining, plus five to your luck, plus one to your speed, plus five to defense, and a plus five to your attack. That is really a mouthful of benefits. How can Magic Rock Candy be so good? Well, it's really, really hard to get. Like, extremely hard to get. Unfortunately, you can't just simply make some magic rock candy in your kitchen. This is an exclusive item that can only be bought from the desert trader on Thursdays. Well, that doesn't sound too bad, right? It costs three prismatic shards each. Yeah, magic rock candy is seriously expensive, but it has to be because it is incredibly powerful. It might seem insignificant, but a plus five to attack is actually insane. It adds way more damage than you would expect. The luck bonus is also just insane. If you paired some magic rock candy with some ginger ale, you will have a huge plus seven luck. This will allow you to find more prismatic shards. I managed to find 10 on a single run in the skull cavern, effectively paying for my magic rock candy with some extra. So yes, magic rock candy is really, really good good and that is why it comes at such a high price. I think it's worth it. And that brings us to the end of the video. Which food items are your favorite in Stardew Valley? Please let me know in the comments below. To be honest, I just love coffee and I always have some coffee on me at all times. It's addictive in Stardew Valley and in real life. Anyway, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.